okay. Howdy folks, welcome to the second episode of Outdoor Addictions. I'm here with uh, Chris Exephus. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, Bruce. How are you doing today? Very good. Good to be here. Yep. We um, hope you enjoyed our first episode. It's a learning experience for all of us. And uh, Keith is actually with us in the room, but he's got somewhere to go here in a few minutes. So There's his hand <laughs> for everybody watching on um, YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> anyway, he's got to leave in a few minutes, so he won't be. You feel free to make a comment if you need to at any time. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're going to talk today a little bit about, uh, you know, th this show is about our, our passions and we love everything Out hunting related, That's right. right? Outdoor related, hunting related. Whether it's real estate or hunting or whatever. If it's outside, real estate, inside, yeah, we're addicted to it. Somebody asked me the other day, what's my favorite season? Is it chasing turkeys, deer, what? And I said, you know... Whatever season's open is my right. favorite season. Right, right now, I'm getting excited about trapping some stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's trapping season, so, you know, setting them snares and, and live traps and getting excited. That's right. And, you know, and we list and sell all types of land, but mainly it's hunting and recreational property. And that's one of the benefits of having your own property is you can enjoy it year-round, right? You can that's enjoy right land management, doing what you want to do on it. Uh, but one topic we want to talk about today is alligator hunting. And uh, you can see right in, front, right in front of us, we've got uh, two alligators, one that I took a few years ago, and then Chris. This world record giant over here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we thought we'd just talk a little bit about alligator hunting. And, and let me be the first to say, we're no, well, I'm not an expert I'm on not alligator either. hunting at all. I can eat them well, yeah. and I can shoot them. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to attempt to be as, as good as we can on explaining this today. We just kind of, you know, again, before we start all this, we want you to check your regulations for where you hunt. Obviously, uh, you know, we're, we're again, uh, we've done this before. We've been on several alligator hunts in the past, and we hope to have more in the future. Uh, but again, check your state regulations to make sure that you're doing it the right way. Uh, Bruce, why don't we have a plate of alligator balls while we're doing this? You know, some fried gator. That'd be a good idea. We got to start thinking yeah, this we thing. We got to plan ahead. That's right. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about ducks next and have some roasted duck wrapped in. That sounds good to me. See, I'm getting hungry. Wrapped in bacon. Long, wrapped in bacon. It's been a long day. Okay. <laughs> I went to Papa's today and I tried to stick to that diet and I got a fish and some cabbage. And it was tough seeing everybody eat all that good fried catfish and bread pudding. Yeah, I'm on a diet these days, so I can't eat that stuff. So you on the seafood diet? You yeah. seafood need it? <laughs> <laughs> I heard. I, I know I say this a lot, but I heard a guy say the other day, he said, I've been so hungry, I'm on two diets. Two diets, that's right. So, <laughs> that's just the nature of it. But, uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to avoid the fried stuff. Tell me the process. I'm, I've am i never, ever hunted alligators in my life. I've heard about it. I want to do it. I live in, let's, well, we're going to talk about Mississippi. That's where we are. That's right. That's the regulations we know. So, and like Bruce said before, if you you know if you're looking at doing this, obviously we know Louisiana is different. You yeah, can turn dude. on the History Channel and watch. That's right. Um, you know, uh, swamp people, and it looks pretty fun. It does. It's that, exciting. And, but that's not how we do things around here. Mm -hmm. um, very different in the state of Mississippi. It's very different, and it's very short season. Very different season, um, but ve very worth the four or five days. Or is it 10 days? I think it's 10, 10 days. I think it's 10 days. The Maybe I only got days. to go four or five days last yeah, that's year. And it always is held uh, at the end of August, and it runs into the first week right, of September. Right around my birthday. Yeah, yeah and it's, birthday it's hot as blue blazes. Yeah. You know, just hot as, as you a, would. as a blister bug in a pepper patch. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. Uh, but, yeah, it's always hot. But, it, it, man, it's... I started gator hunting, uh, I guess it's been about five years ago, the first time I went. And I got hooked immediately, man. Literally. literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we've got some funny stories we're going to share with you about uh, successful hunts and then some hunts that I'm sure are not so successful. Some hunts that didn't even get out the gate. And never, never materialized. <laughs> That's right. And you have those as well. That's but right. The first step is you have to apply for a tag in the state of Mississippi. And that is usually held during the month of June. Uh, it's usually around the first week of June. And those dates can change year to year, but usually it's around that time frame. And so the state of Mississippi, you go to the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, you can Google alligator hunts in the state of Mississippi, and it will get you to the page where you apply for a draw hunt. 
and that's the way it's handled. It's done electronically. You apply for the hunt, and uh, during those dates, uh, you give them your email, and that's how they primarily contact you. I think this year, though, I think they're going to offer where they, you can also receive a text, text as message. well as an email. A lot of people and that's new. That. Um, but pull that, it up now that's you're... right. And a lot of people say, "Well, I never got that email." So they're trying right. to make it where you at least can get it in more than one form. Well, so many times it'll go to your junk folder. That's you right. don't think to go and look at that junk folder and um, see you, Keith. They'll yeah, ba right. bailing right. out on episode two. <laughs> but yeah, you you want to apply for the tag, all right? And so. And then the way it's usually done, the way it's always done actually, is a few days after that, if you are successfully drawn, you'll be notified by email. And this year it'll be by text as well if you, if you, right. if you want that. And then you have so many days, and I can't remember, Chris, how many days. It's not very I, many. It's not. I, I can't remember if it's 10 calendar days or if it's two business weeks. I'm and trying to. I don't know. We're trying to look up that regulation up right now. now but. My point is you only have so many days to actually pay for the tag. And, uh, and so you have to do that. You have to pay. Now, if you don't, uh, that's okay. It'll go into a secondary drawing uh, several days later. And there'll be a secondary drawing uh, that takes place for those who did not, either they never received the email they or just got it and said, you know what, I don't have the money to do that. But I don't have time to do that, so I'm going to let it go. And, uh, and then it goes into a secondary drawing, and then again, you have so many days there to pay for your tag. And uh, All right, so I found it. So this year, it is going to be June 1st through June 8th is okay. the first um, week. Okay. So you, so you go on to the application, go on the website, find the application, and you submit it. And, I'm, and the only fee you pay during those weeks is the processing fee of your application. That's right. And it's like $2.50. It's I very think, minimal. Yeah. I honestly think it's only just to process your debit card online is, is, that, is so. what that fee is. Yeah. Uh, but we will add, once you get drawn, then you're paying the 300, it's $300 fee. I think it is. It's yeah. a $300 fee for the actual tag. But anyway, back up. June 1st to June 8th is the first week of this year. So it's going to be between 10 a.m. on the 1st to 10 a.m. on the 8th. And then and then there's another one, the 14th through the 22nd. And, and that's like, your secondary drawing. Like Bruce said, if you don't get drawn the first time, you have another chance. You go back in the pool, and you've actually made it on that second. I have. As a matter of fact, I think that's, that's happened to me twice. I've actually drawn two tags, and both of them were on the secondary Second, drawing. My first so, tag was on the secondary drawing. So my point is... <clears throat> quite often we're discouraged we don't get that initial email and we're like oh, got to be kidding right. me but then you kind of give up on it and you don't follow through and check the next one that's right you forget you forget and you just like you blow it off and say well i'm not i'm never going to get drawn and the truth is you may get that next one and so you you got to stick with it and check it again make sure uh that you get it and make sure that you pay, pay for, for it. it chris that's you got right <laughs> that's right so once you get your tag drawn um, you've got so many days to pay for that tag and you know I can remember plain as day checking my email um, it was in June we were out at the pool it was summertime it was beautiful um, and I checked my email and I looked over at Lane and I said got drawn again second year in a row I got drawn um, and I said don't let me forget mm -hmm. and I forgot and let me tell you I missed it I remembered by like a day <laughs> and I was calling. I don't care who you are. Once you miss the deadline to pay, Once that's it. Once you miss it. it, you miss it. That's right. That's so, it. Uh, and, and, you know, the other half of that is, like you said, this is a lottery drawing, and you've got tens of thousands of people applying, and you've only got just a handful getting drawn. I mean, it was, what, 900? Yeah. 900 or maybe 1,000? 960 some odd tags. 960 tags, and you you feel it in your gut when you let that lapse. Yep. So, you know, I, I got a, I got a feeling I may be on the, the no draw list. You know, they, <laughs> they probably may. They, this probably, I don't know if this is true or not, but if there's a no draw list because you didn't pay, I'm on it. I can tell you That's that. right. So I'm going to have the two-year-old, the five-year-old, the eight-month-old. Oh, you can't apply with me. <laughs> I'm going to have my mother-in-law applying. I'm going to have my wife applying. We're all applying this year. That's right. And I, I tell you, it, you may be listening to this podcast and you may think, you know, I I, I have no clue how to do that. I have no clue. I mean, that sounds so, uh, re just a remote chance that I'd even do it. But I would encourage you to do it. Because right. there was a time when I wasn't sure I wanted to go. And I, I 
Actually, the first time I went, I went with a buddy of mine who had a tag. I, I didn't have one. And that's the nice thing about this. That's right. You just buy a gator license, you can go hunt with a buddy. Yeah. And it's a very social hunt, isn't it? It's, I mean, well, you, you have a great time. Well, you need the help, one. Absolutely. You, there's no, I don't care who you are, there's no way on earth you can gator hunt by yourself. It is impossible. It's very hard. Um, but like you said, you know, you turn it into my trip, my first trip. We turned, we got over there early and we just fished all day. We turned it into a, uh, we actually went on the 1st of September, my birthday's the 2nd. So we got over there that evening on the 1st and we did, we fished uh, all afternoon came back we docked we went in town to a restaurant because over here it's nighttime gator hunting that's right that's right so in mississippi it's nighttime gator hunting i'll throw that in there well, well you can hunt during the you day. can hunt during the day but the, the your most chance your, your best, best chance, chance is in the evening times um it's cool and that water and it's cool on those gators and they're hanging out on the banks yeah um they're not nestled up in the trees they're in that cool water um, but anyway, we came back in and, and ate, ate some good food, ate fried fish because we didn't catch a single fish. You're like, you know what? <laughs> we didn't catch a fish. We're going to go eat some fish. It's probably and, too uh, hot to fish. I'm right? telling you, the, the, uh, the carp were just, uh, that's, oh, a, yeah. that's a story for another day. But anyways, and we went back that evening and, um, and it's just such a fun, you turn it in any kind of trip you want, you that's know, right. That's right. bring your friends, you hang out all day, you chat, you have fun. And then when the action comes, you're glad that they're there right so yeah and, and you like chris said you need plenty of help because when you catch a 10 foot plus alligator i'm telling you what. you've got a, literally that old saying you got a tiger by the tail literally uh, you got an alligator by the tail and when we get to my story <laughs> i will tell you by the tail literally i mean this is just an unbelievable catch that we got but you wouldn't think you've seen these gators on tv and whether it's national geographic or youtube or whatever get up and they can walk so far and they've got such big heavy bodies let me tell you in the water these animals are unreal they are i mean it is like it is unlike any force you've ever experienced that's why we say go gator hunting if you've never been get with someone who has been right um for safety reasons for um you know reasons to make sure that you're doing it properly doing it by the book doing it by the law um, right right you then, don't want to you don't want to cut corners that's obviously, right because you can get some serious trouble right, if, if you don't but or, Chris you is get, right. or you can get hurt or you, or you can get hurt yes you can you have to respect these animals obviously even a small one even though that's it's right. a, you know small alligator is considered uh, you know three or four foot long right uh but uh, i mean obviously everything can be dangerous so you yep. just have to you know go at someone who's experienced, right. who uh, maybe they have a boat. If you have a boat, that's fine. But, you know, go with someone who's been before and you'll really enjoy it. And don't be, don't be lackadaisical. I mean, if you're, don't, this isn't a fishing trip. Wear your life jackets. Yes. The whole entire time. Take, take the right precautions. Take the right precautions. And like we said earlier, the best time to hunt these guys are in the evenings. Yeah. It's dark. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have, you have to have your boat lights on if you're moving. I mean, again, that goes back to go by your, your, your laws of everything, your boat laws. You got to have your, your lights on if you're stopped, if you're moving, your navigation, your, um, you know, your beams, everything, life jackets, you're being safe. It, it, it's a fun time and you want to have fun. That's exactly but, right. um, you know, we've all seen firsthand how things can change in a minute. And if you're fishing somewhere like we did on the Mississippi River, yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any dangerous than that. That's right. Just by being on the river. Just by being on the river, in you're in a, 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 a position of, you know, you don't know what could happen. And um, we went and bought those. I tell you, life jackets get uncomfortable. I've been there. Yeah, especially when it's hot. Especially when it's hot especially because it's hot. you've got mosquitoes attacking you. You're sweating out. I mean, this is the end of August, September. <laughs> I don't care if the sun's down or not. Yeah. It is hot. And uh, we went up to Bass Pro, and we got those automatic inflating. Yeah. Um, those are good. I've they're used those. they're super comfortable, super small, and they work. We made our mother, made my mother-in-law test it out in the pool. Really? And boy, that was uh, that was awesome. <laughs> and uh, she didn't, her hair didn't get all the way under the water. She come flying out of there, but like the Coast Guard coming up out of a deep sea rescue. Uh, and then look, you can properly. Change the CO twos on these guys. Don't think. I mean, these aren't one time use um, of deals. And we got cartridges. I know I'm kind of yeah, that's I'm all right. diving off. That's but all right. hey, just be careful um, and have a good time and do it the right way because these are like Bruce said, 
These are prehistoric animals. They are. They've been around for thousands of years, and all they know how to do is bite things and swallow <laughs> them. You know what I'm saying? And, and quite and, good at it. And I'm telling you, these animals, these two here, I mean, you got a, a ten and a half and a nine and a half foot gator. Um, they were hand, mine I know was a handful for three full grown men. Yes. Um, so, and, and I'm, I'm a pretty big old boy, as Roy D. Mercer used to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll back up for a minute and, and, and get back to the tags. There are actually two types of tag is public, public land, land, public land, and then private land. That's right. And you know, I, I have to admit, I never have applied for the t- the private, private land, land tag. Uh, that that's a different. I, th- a different I, I haven't either, either. But if I remember correctly, <clears throat> wherever your hunt is going to be, you have to submit some documentation. Right. Let's say you've got a fifty acre lake on your place, and you're saying, "Hey, you know what? I got a lake on my own land, and I'm going to hunt my place." I think you have to get you have to get pretty detailed about your place, where it is, yeah. the type of place, when you're going to go, and all that. Um, because especially these guys that go on someone else's private land, we already know there's so much liability that comes with that. That's right. So it's a little more in depth. Um, Most people apply for the public water, or public right. land hunt, and, and the state of Mississippi is broken up into several zones. We hunt primarily in the southwest That's Mississippi right. zone, so southwest zone. Uh, oddly enough, we're bragging about it. Some of the biggest alligators, the biggest gators, we're taking I mean, right here in the southwest. That's zone. exactly right. I mean, uh, the Mississippi River, um, Homochitta River, Homochitta River, and um, is it Pearl? The, the, uh, the Pearls is it Pearl or uh, southeast? The Pearl uh, may land in the southeast. It may, maybe Lawrence County Park. I'm not sure. We have to check on that. That's right. Sure. I know it's in the it's in the it's in the central part around Jackson, but it may yeah. hit the southeast zone. But yeah, Homochitta and the, and the Mississippi River. I mean, you know, Mississippi River. Let's, we're talking about a several thousand year old river here, billions of years. You, That's, you right. That's right. That's uh, right. So when you apply for your tag, you're going to choose a zone, and you can only choose for one. That's zone. right. Uh, you can't choose for multiple zones. You just choose one zone. You apply for that. You get a tag in that zone, and then uh, let's say you're successful and you get a winning uh, lottery, you, you win the tag. Uh, the Mississippi Department of Wildlife will send you a package in the mail with a booklet explaining everything. We talked about it earlier, Chris. They even tell you how to help you learn how to skin it. Skin it out, quarter it up. Um, if you want to tan the hide, they go step-by-step process on how the salt, the water, the mixture, the right. formula. Um, how to roll it up, wrap it up, and, and where to put it at. If you want to tan the hide and make belts, hat bands, boots, you yeah. know. Um, it's it's very informative. And, and, and the state of Mississippi does a great job because they don't just throw you to the wolves. Right. I mean, if you well, you do it the correct way and the right way, you can have a successful hunt. You can enjoy some amazing meat. Um to eat alligator is one of the, one of my favorite things to Absolutely. eat. Absolutely, and uh, and then you can let no part of the animal go to waste. I mean, you see, we have our heads bone mounted here. Uh, they teach you how to do something with the hide. There, there isn't a taxidermist around here that can't help you That's in that exactly process right. as well. So, and also in that booklet, what I love about it is in the back, uh, it has a, a list of taxidermists in the state of Mississippi. That's right. If you don't know of one, you can go there. It's a great resource. And their the contact name, phone number, email, some cases website. Hey, you can research them, and they're like with me. I called these guys yeah. and, and talked to them, and you know, and they they're very helpful. So, uh, I think what Chris and I are both saying is, they don't throw you to the wolves. They really don't. They yeah. really help you through the entire they've process. Thought, they've thought it out. You know, uh, I feel like they've stepped back to the point of if, like we said a while ago, I've never went on this. I've never done this. How can I do it? And if you get drawn for that tag and you don't have somebody that you know has done that before, Mm -hmm. that book will help you. But I will add, find somebody because you, even if you draw the tag yourself and you've never done it, go, but find somebody who's gone. Because when we start to talk, you tell our stories of our hunts, you'll understand why you want somebody there who's done it before um, how to do it and what to expect because what to expect. when something happens that you weren't expecting with these animals, it will catch you off guard and hard. Absolutely. So, All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the methods of catching and dispatching an alligator. Right. So, Chris, kind of start that. Like way. we said earlier, this is night and day from Louisiana. 
Right. Um, you know, if you watch Swamp People or you check out the shows uh, or YouTube videos, you know, they hang, they hang bait, gators get them, they pull them up, they dispatch them that way, or they dispatch them from a distance if they see them. That's right. Uh, here in Mississippi, it's, we don't do it that way. Um, there are several um, ways that you have to start off and you have to find these animals and get them to you. So some of the ways that you can do this, we got the treble hook and ride and reel away. Which is by far the most popular way. It's the I most popular, most um, and it's and it's in my opinion, it's the easiest once you get to hang up. Yeah, and I, and I will tell you this: uh, the first time I went gator hunting, um, you know, I, I fished my whole life, but there is something about well, number one, you're using a rod. You're using a massive it, deep sea rod. Right. It's not your basic bass fishing. That's rod. right. It's this big heavy duty rod. And if you've been, guys, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's very awkward. Oh, Not only that, you're throwing this treble hook that weighs, it seems like it weighs three pounds. I, I got a funny story about that. <laughs> you don't, if you haven't flung a big ride with a treble hook, you don't know what to expect. That's right. So I'll tell you, and I'll tell you my story later when I get going, but I'm going to just add this little piece in here. It's fresh on my mind. We got down there, uh, and we were just hard at it. We were finding gators, and we were getting on them. We were going after them, and... We got one, we said, all right, we're going to go after this one. Well, it's me and Kenneth, my uncle. Um, my father-in-law, he was just he was just the captain that night. He, he had the light. He had the light, and he was driving. <laughs> and he helped once we actually ended up getting the gator. But the first few times, you know, we had a gator maybe 30 yards. And I'm telling you, when I flung that thing, I put all 400 yards of that line out there. <laughs> If, you, if you're not used to that thing, yes. I mean, you think you're just barely, and it just goes. And, 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 and on top of that, guys... It's it's pitch dark. At it's night. pitch dark, and you don't realize how much you use your peripheral vision when you cast. That's right. But at nighttime, you lose that. That's right. And it's it's and different. You're trying like, to you dial know, in. Yeah, a gator's 25, 30 yards. And you're like, yeah. Well, it's just right there. That's right. I can't tell me times a cast just before it or way over it. We both did that way past it so many times that Will pulls the boat over to the bank. And me and Kenneth had to get out and practice. <laughs> you know, like when you, you, you're, you're, you're aiming or you're sighting your gun in or whatever. Anyway, we had to, we found a tree and we practiced to that tree for about 20 minutes. And once we got, you got, you got to do that. Well, I, I'll give you, I mean, it brings up a good point. That first year I went, I, I struggled to cast that yeah. accurately. And I was hunting with a buddy of mine, Buster Buett, his son, Taylor. And we finished that season and Buster said, Bruce, I got some homework for you. You need to put a five-gallon bucket out in the yard. And, and try it. And get out there. That's right. While it's dark. Not during the daytime. That's right. Do it do, while it's do, and, and practice. Yep. Ca and put that bucket at 20 yards, at 40 yep. yards, at 80 yards if you want to. What's the first thing that happens before that gator gets tired when you start casting at him? He starts moving. He's going down. He's going to go down. He, a lot of times they won't go very far. Right. They'll just go they down. Do go down. And if you're not, if you're not used to uh, that distance perception of casting in that environment and you start throwing whether you land way past him or way before him he's going down and they'll stay down five ten minutes oh, absolutely and then they'll come back up and you, so you if it's your first time like it was on our first time you'll get frustrated well you go to look for another gator well the truth is he's still there we eventually learned that lesson yeah you know we just kind of hung out uh, later on down the evening and, and there he popped back up but that's why it's important yeah. To know that distance perception in that environment at nighttime, because you're like you said, you're looking at a spotlight. You know, we're looking at a Q beam of a gator's eyes, and everything else is dark. Right. Mosquitoes are biting you. You're on a boat. You can't see whatever, and you'll have a many of them go down before you can snag. That's right. I'm convinced there would be a whole lot more alligators caught if hunters would practice. Oh, absolutely. It's just like shooting a gun or shooting a boat. That's right. You're much better if you practice. Well, and it would make the hunt go a lot smoother. I mean, you can prepare. I mean, we were out there seven hours before we ended the evening, right. and you know, um, it's better on you. It's better on. It's better on the animal. It is. You know, it is. Um, but anyway, so we got rod and reel, right? right. And that's the most popular way. Most popular rod and reel way. with a big treble hook on it. You cast it across the gator's back, ideally. Let it land just beyond it. Reel it up back. to it and set the hook. Set and the then hook. hold on. Make sure you have some strong wire. Absolutely. I mean, that, uh, yeah, because, look, uh, um, there's nothing worse than to hook a really nice alligator and five minutes into it, it breaks your line. Not only that, but you don't want to leave these animals out there 
with treble hooks in them. That's right. Because these treble hooks are large, and you know, just like any other hook, they got the they got this snare edge on the end that they're gonna. I mean, it's gonna be hard to come out. Gators tied. It's hard to get in. It's hard to come out. That's right. Same um, thing. You don't want them swimming around with this thing in them, um, but it happens. Things it happen. happen. You know, you can have two hundred pound test on there. Things happen. But make sure that you've got some strong wire. That that braided wire, I mean, you could tow a F-250 with that yeah, thing. Braided wire works very well, especially when you're in these public rivers. Right. And there's a lot of treetops and debris. Yep. And, and that ends up was breaking your line and stuff like that. That's and they right. start getting in these underwater logs. And But if you got that braided line, that 80 pound test line, which works pretty well. Right. Uh, but that braided line works, in my opinion, it works better than the other line. That's right. It's, uh, very and it's, tough. And it's smaller than 80 pound regular wire. That's right. That's and right. Um, and they actually make a fluorescent that you can see on your spotlight, which is actually recommended. That's right. And uh, I, I'll be honest, this next season I'm gonna I'm gonna go that you route because you can. A, a buddy of mine had that on his reel, and man, you could see yep. it. You can see it so much better. Right. All right. So next we got the uh, the old school harpooning. If your granddaddy's got a harpoon in the shed still. <laughs> you know, be safe. I've never shot one. I, I, I never have done that, uh, either, but that is another technique. That, it's that's a proven way. legal technique. There is another technique kind of kind of adding on to that, a little more new age, and that's bow fishing. Yeah. Bow, bow, bow fishing here lately has become a popular thing, and um, there are some guys out there that are better at bow fishing than I am at bow hunting. I'm telling you. Right. You know, they can yeah. hit a fish, and you know the fish are kind of – you have to what happened? That's right. That's right. Which I don't know which way to do it, but you know, <laughs> they, the fish had an advantage for a while before they figured out which way to shoot those arrows. Because I'm telling you, yes, indeed. But same thing there. Uh, put you some strong wire on that bow. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it would be like to fight a gator on, while holding a bow. I know what it's like holding a deep sea rod. Right. Um, because those bows, I mean, they just got a reel right attached to the side. Yeah. You know. I think but, I think most at that point get that rope with that big treble hook right. in it, which is another technique. It's that is snare. another technique. Um, uh, but I would not recommend you hook one until it's somewhat tired. You got that right. Uh, and I got a funny story with that real quick. I want to share with you guys. I, 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 I gator hunt with Buster Buett, who lives locally, and his son Taylor Buett. And uh, long story short, we tried to make it to the Mississippi River one night. Uh, the water level was low that year. <clears throat> we were not able to get, we actually put our boat in there at the Homochitta River, uh, worked our way down toward the Mississippi. Long story short, never was able to get into the Mississippi. So we were forced to, to hunt right there in the Homochitta. And I won't tell you the location, but brother, we hooked into, he was every bit of 10 and a half, 11 foot alligator. Um, we hooked that alligator seven times, Chris. Seven, not, a lot of people think I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Count them. Seven times he got on the hook and got off. Got off. And the seventh time we got him up to the boat. And he was exhausted and shook, so were we. Yeah. And uh, we were got him. We had a couple of hooks in him. We got him up to the boat. And when we did, one of the hooks came out. And somehow he rejuvenated and all of a sudden he takes off. And when he, when he did, the hook that I had in him came out as well. The, for the seventh time. But the old gator was so tired that he just surfaced. He just surfaced. He up. was less than four yards from the yeah. front of the boat. And I'm standing at the front of the boat. And he just pops up. And I don't know about you, when you first see that thing, when, oh, it, when yeah. it surfaces. Close by. When it's right next right to you. Right next to you. It's, it's incredible. It's one of the things I love most about it. You just can't yeah. get over how big this animal is. And so I'm standing there and Buster's in the back of the boat. So... He surfaces, and I, I don't think Buster knows he's there, you know. So I just reach down and grab that rope with that big treble hook and toss it over his back and snagged it. And when I did that, brother, he took off. <laughs> and now you so got I'm just holding it. You know, how you ever held a rope, when, even when it's wet and it's going through your hand, it's burning. Yeah. It hurts <laughs> like heck. Well, Buster and Taylor rush up to the front of the boat to help me, and they grab the rope as well and we're just holding on look like a bunch of volunteer firemen there you go just leaning back (laughs) leaning hard back on it man and that old gator's just running all of a sudden guess what for the eighth time the hook came out when it did i'm in the front i hit buster buster goes out out the the boat boat. oh my in a matter of seconds that boy was in the boat in the water and i've never seen a man walk on water (laughs) Oh, brother, 
Look, he Ooh. got back in that boat. There hasn't like, been a man since Jesus walked on water that good, Jim. has he? Well, when you that, got a gator that big in front of you, and he's mad at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, when that was done, we all said, you know what? We're going home. Yeah. And so we weren't successful that night, but we had a great memory. Yeah. That obviously, we're talking about it today and laughing about it. So, uh, For a minute there, it wasn't funny, was it? No, it really wasn't. <laughs> it really wasn't funny. It really wasn't. You talk about seeing that animal for the first time. I will never forget. Uh, well, let me back up. So the Mississippi lottery, I don't think we mentioned this earlier, but when you draw a tag, you actually can take two gators. That's right. That's so right. you can take a gator between four and seven foot, and then you can take a gator seven foot and larger. You, you can have one under seven foot right. and one over seven foot, but it has to be a minimum of four, four feet foot, long. Oh, that's right. right. So between, yeah, four and seven and then seven and over. So um, to kind of jump into my story just a little bit, we had we had gator hunted and gator hunted and we we were we were learning how to cast running them off and just here and there finally we we found the one that we ended up harvesting this guy here and from a distance he looked small um looked smaller than he is i'm gonna right. say small say smaller right. than he is so let me add real quick so the rule of thumb is from between the eyes to the snout which is basically here right up here right so whatever that is in inches is generally what the gator is in feet so if it's seven eight nine inches then your gator is going to be seven eight nine feet and right. that's a good tip to use a when you're out there on the water and that's what i did i shined over there and i saw that gator and i knew he was at least seven foot because right. i was making sure and i said you know what guys Let's try this dude, because we had been chasing them all down into the corner. Old River shoots off of Mississippi River, if you're familiar with the area, um, out of Natchez area over there. So we got on him and hooked him. Um, and I'm telling you, when, we got, when I got the first hook on the rod in him, he took off. Yeah. And this dude pulled an 18-foot metal flat-bottom boat with three grown men and all our gear, <laughs> you know, like Jaws pulled them buckets yeah, on that's, Jaws, that's you right. know. What did Quint say? Let's put another bucket in him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, get the hooks, you know, finally. And they'll wear themselves out. But, but, but it felt like he was on the floor of the river just crawling. I mean, yeah. that's just, just crawling his way because, I mean, he's so strong. But anyways, fast forward through the hunt. Going back to what you said, you don't know how big they are. I'll never forget, we got him tired, and I saw the bubbles coming up. He was letting his air out, and he was coming up. He was and about we, to come up. And when he came up, and he was at the boat, I'll never forget, I hollered out, oh, my God. <laughs> because that head came up right by the boat, and with hide and everything else on him, I mean, he was massive, and you'll never forget that. Absolutely. Um, and, y'all, that's what gets you hooked is when, you know, they're very elusive animals, and like Chris said, it's really hard to judge how big a gator is right. until you actually catch it. That's right. Um, but they always seem to be bigger than you think they do. That's right. Uh, when you get them up to the boat and when you when that first sighting, you first see it, it it's exhilarating and yet it's scary at the same That's time. That's right. It's I, everything rolled into one. We've seen hundreds and thousands of gators at the zoo, on TV, and when you're in that environment, it's nothing. Yeah. You know, but when you're... When you're trying to harvest this animal, when you're trying to take his life, and he comes up, and you're now you're really with nature, and you're that's with right. a prehistoric animal, who, who and you're in their element. That's exactly. And right. it's the middle of the night. Middle of the night, <laughs> and you're tired like he is. And you're in the middle of nowhere. In that's right. Cases. No cell phone service. No cell phone you know, service. This, and uh, it is. It you is can a, see how it can be addicting. Uh, if you think a buck walking out in front of that bow gets you buck fever, there's gator fever. Absolutely. I mean, let's coin it now. Absolutely. Hashtag gator fever. And when that dude comes up, you there ain't a, at an amount of Tylenol that'll break that fever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. So let's All right, move back on. to yeah, move on back to the uh, the methods. So um, you got the harpoon, you got the bow, you've got the um, rod and reel right and then like you said a while ago you got the snare rope uh which is just a thick rope with another treble hook and i'll add that we used that so we used it but we used that as the third yeah when i say third we got two rods in him and that's and the key get multiple rods multiple rods in him and if you can get close to the gator with multiple rods in him and then throw that because that if you think casting's hard Imagine trying to be Robin Hood with that thing. Exactly. It's hard. Um, it's, no, that could be dangerous trying to swing it that is. thing around the boat. Yeah, but, you can, but you can put that on the cleat of the boat after you get it in him, and now you've got a, you got a, a stationary thing in him with your rods and reels. 
Um, so let's talk about what you do, Bruce. Tell us what you do. You got the gator. You got him up to the boat. What's the next step that you got to do? All right. It, it's always important to, to wear that thing out. I mean, you want him to be dead tired. And eventually he will be. He or she, if it's male or That's female. That's right. They're going to fight. They're going to go to the bottom. They're going to stay down there. They're going to surface. They're going to get a breath of air. And then what are they going to do, Chris? They're back right back That's down. That's right. But eventually they'll pop up and they'll be just exhausted. Taking a break. And so before you can dispatch the alligator, and we'll get into how you do that, but before you just dispatch the alligator, you have to secure it with a snare. That's right. You have to put a, a cable around its head, or I think one of its legs. One of its legs is is okay, but you and again, have to check check whatever regulation. Yeah, check 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 your regulations. Whatever state to, to, you're to be sure. In. Don't take our word for it. That's check right. and see. But what we've done is get that snare around its head. And you do that before you shoot it because once you shoot it, that gator is going to That's sink. right. That's right. Uh, and also it's for safety purposes as well. You and don't want to shoot a head, you don't want to shoot a hole in the side of your boat excited trying yeah, to you trying want to be to very careful. Animal. That's right. Very careful. And like you said, once you shoot him, he's he's relaxing his his breathing and everything, and he's going down. And I don't care if you've got five rods in him, you're not bringing him up. It's going to be extremely hard. It's going to be extremely so, hard. Out of respect for the alligator and for safety purposes, you get that snare around right. him, and then you can dispatch the alligator. So, Chris, how do we do that? Well, and to add on to that snare, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you what I use. Um, you know, everybody, is a noose or a snare, if it works, it works. That's right. I went down uh, to the local feed store and I bought a, it's like a dog snare or a coyote snare. Right. Uh, metal rod, six foot long, and it has a loop at the end and it's a metal cable, but it's encapsulated in a rubber coating. Right. You just run the cable down the rod. Down the rod. Loop it, come loop back. Loop it, come back. And it's, it. and it's got a handle on the end. And once you get it over his head and you pull that handle, it stays tight. And now you've got the metal rod and you're in control with both hands. Right. Um, because if you got some old school snare or some homemade thing you made, if it requires, um, you know, a whole lot of stuff to hang it on there, you don't, you want it to be as easy as possible, if That's that right. makes any sense. Yeah. So anyway, you get him snared, you get him to the side of the boat, then you want to take that shotgun and you're going to put it right here. If you can see on the video that you guys are listening on the podcast, you're going to have to subscribe to our YouTube channel, but check this out. But right behind the eyes, right above the brain is the humane way that you dispatch um, the gator and talking about shot sizes, no larger. Well, it has to be a shotgun. Has to be a shotgun. Can't be a rifle. Can't be a. Uh, it can't be a pistol. It could be a. It could be a bang stick, and we'll get into that in a minute. Stick. Or could. shotgun. Um, Twelve gauge or twenty gauge. We took a twenty gauge. I still got the shell um, in my gun case that I use, but took a twenty gauge. But number six shot or larger. Or smaller. Or smaller. Sorry. Or smaller. Number six shot or smaller. There you so go. in other words, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, that's nine right. Half, whatever. That's so it's like it's like when you're reading the uh, land description of the southwest quarter of there the four days go. quarter. You gotta go from we, right to left. Right. But you can I can't ever they're all backwards. Okay. <laughs> six so, or smaller. Right. Which is six, seven, seven and a half, eight, nine, and right. so on. So in other words, bird shot. That's what right. You, what you have to have. And that's you, right. And you, you place the barrel about four inches or so above the, the gator's head uh, and right right behind the eyes and you just pull the trigger and that usually does the trick. Yeah. Now there may be times where you have to you have to shoot him. That's right. There may be. Uh, so but but after there's... you do that, you um, it's important to secure the gator with tape. You make sure their mouth is closed. And you have to secure the gator right. uh, with tape around their mouth before you bring it into the boat. That's right. Uh, and then once you do that, you're supposed to secure its legs with rope to uh, uh, keep the gator from rolling and injuring other That's people right. on the boat. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you tag it immediately. And when you draw your tag, you'll receive all the information uh, of how to properly uh, dispatch, control, tape, and tag your gator. And it's very important you do right. all these things. And uh, because, I mean, I've gator hunted several times, and I've gotten checked by game wardens several times. They're there. They're so, there. Uh, you know, this is a season that's 10 days long. Yes. So you better believe, you know, they're out there. And you want them out there. You want them there. I mean, believe me, when it, if, if you get yourself in the bind, it's nice I'm to know somebody's around close by. But not only that, but the other part of that that I like is 
it's keeping people honest. It is. I don't want to be in an area uh, on the big river or wherever, and there's somebody being careless around me. Right. You know, so knowing that they're out there. Um, but just to go back to what you just said, you know, what if somebody says, well, after I shoot this gator in the back of the head and he's dead, why do I got to tape him up? Why do I got to do that? Well, well, first and foremost, look at, look at the teeth. I mean, you can cut your fingers on these teeth. These guys are the disposal company of the water. <laughs> um, they eat anything, and they carry crazy bacteria in their yeah, mouth. Absolutely. They do. You can cut your hand. Your ankles, you walk by them. You can, you know, if that mouth opens, what do we know that animals do? Sometimes they have nerves. You know, talking about taping him so he doesn't roll. That tail is dangerous. Exactly I mean, right. you're dealing with a tail that can power a 500 pound animal to pull your boat. There's muscles and nerves in there that 20 minutes after he's laying in the boat can cause problems. Absolutely. So you want him safely secured. If you have a boat in an area of your boat where you can put this gator that you're not going to be for the remainder of the trip. Let's say that, hey, you, once you got him in, you don't plan on doing anything else but get to the house. Put him in a safe area to where where you're riding back to the boat ramp, he's not near you. Right. Because there will be nothing worse than traveling back on that river or that lake or whatever at nighttime. Well, no, can... that is like 3 in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's the middle, literally I, early morning. That's hours. right. Uh, dark as it can be, and, and that thing's thrashing around. And if you're like we were on the old river, you're already dealing with carp flying out of the water. I mean, you're ducking and diving and dodging and ever doing all the other deeds you can do to get out of the way of them dudes. So, right. again, we can't stress enough, use as many safety precautions as you can. And guys, I don't know if you can hear the train, uh, coming, uh, the train coming through, but the, we're one of the few places that still has a beautiful Amtrak station, and they roll through here often. So if you're thinking about making a trip down here to... Brookhaven, Southwest Mississippi. Catch the train. Catch the train. It's a pretty tre uh, cheap Tri ticket They're right here by the office. Uh, yeah, we're, we'll come pick you up. Come pick you up, and we'll be glad to show you the next property. There you go. Um, so anyways, you got him in the boat. Tagging him is an important thing. And do it right when you get him in there. Don't sit there and wait. Yeah, yeah, don't don't say, <clears throat> wait till we get to the boat ramp near the truck, and we get the boat up, and the lights on, take a break. No, tag him right then and there. Go ahead and put your tag on. That's right. Do it the right way. Um, that's why we can enjoy these type of things. And, and guys, as you're, as you're listening to this, we, we, we kind of started from how you start to how you dispatch the alligator. But many times what you'll do is you'll catch one, and you'll want to get it in the boat and secure it and take pictures with it. Right. And it's usually a smaller gator. That's right. Uh, if you're not careful, that's how you'll get hurt. That's right. It's not the big ones. That's right. Because the big ones, you're going to dispatch it. Yeah. It's the little ones. It's the small ones. It, you got because we, we kind of cut corners. We don't pay attention. And I will tell you that the small ones will hurt you just as much as the big ones. Well, that's a great point because when you're out there hunting for these gators, you are going to come across gators from 12 inches to three foot long and they're not as big and powerful um swimming wise as these gators you're hunting so they'll be tired in the water right. i mean and if you wanted to you could literally ride right by one of them and grab them yeah, and, the it's, little ones, yeah. and it's fun to pull them up and take pictures but if you're not careful like bruce said you can get you can get injured bad um and if you don't have a first aid kit in that boat when them teeth grab you i don't care how big he is so obviously it's a you can tell we're passionate about it we love it uh, we always look forward to it every year, but you have to respect uh, the animal that you're hunting. And uh, anyway, the whole point of this podcast today is to share those stories with you and share what, what we've learned. And again, we're no experts by any means, but I would encourage you to apply for a tag. Yeah. If you live in the state of Mississippi and if you have a hunting license, apply for that tag you just might get it and it's like winning the lottery isn't it Chris? it really is it's like winning the lottery and i'll you add if you're if you're a first time applicant there's a strong chance that you're going to get chose yeah and um i mean i got chosen the first time i went in and um and and i and like you said i've i've thought i've always thought man i don't know you know i don't know if i want to do gator hunting but once you go out there and do it, you're already waiting on June, like I was the next year. That's you right. know, you just, you just and look I mean, hey, we've got we've got literally a month and four days, and it's time it's yeah. time to apply. So, what I love most about gator hunting, and I'll tell you, we live in the southwest zone, so we primarily go toward Natchez right. where we go, and then when you you uh, uh, put your boat in somewhere close to Natchez, you either go upstream or downstream on the river, Mississippi River, but we always make a big event of it. We go. 
I know you go fishing sometimes yeah. before, but in the past we would go early and we'd go eat a nice supper. Yeah. I mean, go Natchez is full of nice oh, restaurants. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's very ironic to spend the evening in a very nice restaurant and within 30 to 40 minutes, Jeez. you are in the middle of prehistoric nowhere. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> you cannot get that experience just anywhere. It is the coolest thing I'm to be you. from this really nice restaurant to yeah middle of nowhere and by the evenings by the time the evening passes you have gotten the biggest alligator yeah. of your lifetime that's right so um what <laughs> y'all this is vicky she's on the phone she's one of our agents but <laughs> hey work never stops around here i'll i'll deal with this later <laughs> y'all have a good time sorry i want to walk in the office all right, now, back to it. Where were we? You'll hear us do this a lot, but I've been to a lot of, I've lived in a lot of states. I've been to a lot of countries. South Mississippi is beautiful. It is. And it's like Bruce said, you can go into Natchez and whether you're in a 250-year-old mansion eating supper or at a great restaurant, white tablecloths, and yeah. you're enjoying a fine steak, um, for supper, 20 minutes later, you're on one of the biggest, most powerful rivers, and there's no electricity, there's no homes, and you're meandered down through there, and it's prehistoric. And it's getting dark. And it's dark, <laughs> and you're dealing with <laughs> thousand-year-old animals, I mean, that have been for, around for thousands of years. I mean, right, if there's right. a gator out there that's a thousand years old. Yeah. I, I want to go after. I want to go after that one, but we might. We we might. We're going to need a bigger boat. Is that what the Quint said on Jaws? But anyways, uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I love you know love Mississippi. I Absolutely, mean, it is just beautiful, especially the southwest part of the state. So, well, Chris, thank you, man. I enjoyed doing this with you, um, and y'all join us next time as we share more outdoor additions. Yeah. And look, guys, do us a favor. If you like what you heard today. Subscribe to our podcast. Share it with a friend. Um, tell a buddy about it. Uh, we're trying to get this thing on all the platforms that we can. Spotify, Apple, iTunes. Um, go and tell your buddy about this. We plan to put this video up on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Share it for us because, you know, that that's that's the fee. That's the fee. List, the fee that you pay is to share it with somebody because yeah. we want to get the word out. Um, on, on all this, you know, that's right. If, if there's somebody out there right now that has never considered doing this and maybe listening to this, they'll apply and they'll enjoy just another great thing about this great state and conservation and start making memories with their family. That's it. That's, so, all, that's what it's all about is making everlasting memories. That's right. Get out so, and enjoy it. Until next time, stay addicted to the outdoors. That's right. <laughs> Man, we that was a home run. Forty seven. Yeah. <laughs> that